Hi, good afternoon. Show me of hands, how many of you drove here today? Almost everyone. Now show me of hands, how many of you have ever been in a car accident before? All right, wow, quite many. This afternoon theme is about disruptions, and I think it is fair to say that traffic accidents are disruptions to our life, and I want to share with you ideas on how we can reduce these disruptions. When I think of the view on traffic accident, it seems to me that we only see just the tip of the iceberg. Based on the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there were 30,000 fatal crashes in 2013. And these fatal crashes were the one that we usually see in the news. This is mainly because it is required that every state sends this fatal crash information to the federal government. Hence, the data is readily available for analysis and reporting. However, what you don't see is a much bigger portion. The NHTSA also estimate the non-fatal crash to be 5.6 million in the same year. Since it is estimated based on statistical sample, we don't really have the detailed data about it per se, especially where the crashes happen. So of all the crashes that happen, we only see 30,000 out of 5.6 million, or just 0.5%. In order for us to find effective way to reduce accident, I think we should start from having the comprehensive view on the crash data. Do you recall when you were in the accident? The police officer usually come to the scene after things being cleared out. The police officer will have to write a so-called police accident report. In that process, the state does actually collect the information about the crash, both fatal and non-fatal. And that data collection process has become more and more digital. And even all the past reports that has been manually done, those are being digitized. So at the state level, the information has actually become more increasingly available for analysis. Unfortunately, only few states actually open up that crash data for the public to access. I'm so proud to be here today to say that Ohio is one of those few states. So my big thanks to Ohio transportation officials for their thought leadership. How about OH? Great. <laughs> Where were I? Where was I? <laughs> the reason that I think it's just worth the, the shout out because I strongly believe that by opening up this crash data, we open the door for future road safety innovations. And I strongly believe that, or at least I sincerely hope that, the example that, and the ideas that I'll be sharing today will encourage other states to do the same. So where did I get the seed of the idea? It started when I moved to Columbus in April of 2008. It was a combination of both professional and personal experience up to that point. As a newcomer to town, I have to find my way from the office to the hotel and vice versa. Thanks to Google and other GIS technologies, I had this information about the route and the traffic flow at my fingertip. What a convenient information to have. However, besides interested in getting from one place to the next, the, the next on time, I was also interested in getting there safely. However, that content on safe route seems to be missing even today, and I want to change that. On the professional front, one of the key fundamental insights that I had better appreciation up to that point was that process design really matter in determining the outcomes. Carry that insight into this crash analysis, it would mean that besides drivers and vehicles that most of the time that's what we focus our mind on, locations and road designs will have to play a critical role in our understanding and our solution. On the personal front, I had a, the event at the home buying process got me thinking. 
At that time, the realtor took my wife and I to see about 40 houses. And of all the houses that we look at, there were one that my wife really loved in this area. But I still remember when we drove past the Polaris Parkway and South Old State Road, the realtor warned me, this is one of the most dangerous intersections in this city. <laughs> I look at my wife, she's like, I need that kitchen. <laughs> so, the wise man told me, happy wife, happy life. So that's what I did. But as I drive to this intersection on a daily basis, though, I start to see the frequent accident that realtor told me. During the rush hour, there are lines of vehicles at the intersection. And often enough, the vehicle on the right side, the one in the yellow circle right now, try to turn left across the two lanes to the gas station and the car wash. And they often don't see the vehicle come from the other side. And that leads to the crash. From the solution point of view, I often thought, either the city should stop allowing that left turn at that point, or somehow the driver should be informed that by making that left turn decision, they drastically increase the chance of getting into a crash. I start to ask myself, is there a way to disseminate that information and content and knowledge about the location risk to the drivers on a timely and scalable basis? And I think it is doable. Since we do have the crash data from Ohio now, let's take a look at the empirical evidence to see does it confirm with my personal story that I just mentioned. At this intersection, roughly, there are about 46 crashes a year. And that's almost once a week. And we should expect it to continue until changes being made to the road design itself. So far, we're only talking about just one location. I want you to follow the thought experiment with me. We can extend this concept further to the broader geographical area. We can start with Columbus. I'm about to show you a map of Columbus with an accident data point from 2011. The red dot will represent each accident. The darker the red dot means the higher the accident frequency at particular location. Let's take a look. That's a lot of accidents. Since 2011, there have been more than 100,000 crashes happen in this set of locations. And these crashes happen on more than 20,000 locations. You might think that analyzing 20,000 locations can be daunting. And again, it is a solvable problem. To enable this, my colleague and I have developed an analytical platform that will enable us to compute this analysis on an ongoing basis at ease. Now, it won't be a problem anymore whether we analyze 20,000 locations or 200 million locations for that matter. Next, I'm going to show you three more maps of the next three years for the same set of locations. And I want you to see if you can see the consistency on where the crashes happen. Let's take a look. 2012, 2013, 2014. Some of you may see some of the core rate dots basically remain the same, and it's correct. Let me call out these 200 locations. These 200 locations are rough, out of 20,000 or roughly about 1% of all the crash locations consistently account for more than 30% of all the crashes. You start to see the Pareto principle is at work here. Extend the concept just a little bit further. There are 2,000 locations, represent roughly about 10% of all the crash locations that consistently, over time, account for more than 66% of all the crashes. And this fundamental insight on crash concentration repeatedly show up 
on our analysis across city, across states. Any applications of this insight, anyone? The obvious one came to my mind is safety-based route navigation. There's an old saying that I like: "We should know where we're going to be in trouble, so we won't go there." <laughs> right? Imagine you want to go from your house to the destination. What if GPS can not only give you the route information, the time, but also the crash risk associated with each route? Let's take a look at the demonstration of the idea together. If you take this first route, it will take you about 20 minutes, but you have to drive through multiple accident-prone locations. But if you take an alternate route, it will take you pretty much the same time, but with much less exposure to the accident risk. Given that knowledge, will you make your driving decision differently? And I hope you will in many cases. Further down the road, I see two other applications. One is auto insurance, and second one is driverless car. On auto insurance, the current focus on the risk pricing today has been mostly about you, the driver, your credit score in particular. <laughs> I mean, for those who are in the field, they know, right? So, also other personal and vehicle information. Many advanced insurance companies work hard to convince you safe driving behavior will save you on your car insurance. And that is correct. But we just saw that we can push that idea further. Safe driving behaviors combined with the route you choose to take over time can save you on your car insurance. And remember, you have control over those choices. Last but not least, driverless car. Imagine yourself in a driverless car. Wouldn't you want the vehicle to actually have the information about the safe route? Let me leave you this, with this message. At the end of the day, you are still in the driver's seat. At least two things you can do. First, you can make safety one of your priorities in your travel planning. And second, outside of Ohio, Texas, and New Jersey, which are the only three states to provide the public with the access to the crash data, you can talk to your state officials to open up this crash data so we can foster the future road safety innovations. Why am I so passionate about solving this problem? Partly because I think we can. But more importantly, just envision when we reduce the overall crash by just 10 percent. We are talking about preventing more than half a million disruptions, reducing more than 200,000 injuries, not to mention potentially saving lives. Not, and these are not just numbers. They represent our safety and the safety of our loved ones. Not only that, it is solvable. I think it is also worth solving for. Thank you.